really, really very happy, honestly, very happy to be here to talk to you. I love to talk to the young generation because you're the future. You're the future. And so if I can part with you, whatever it is that I have learned, it will be passing my knowledge to the next generation. That's very gratifying. We have only one hour, which is very short, and I feel very pressed in one hour and 15 minutes to cover 50 years of my, heart, of my lifetime's work. Uh, hopefully, my goal is at the end of the lecture to stimulate you to read my books, because <laughs> that will be the continuation of the knowledge. In one hour, we cannot cover everything. So let's try to get the bottom line. What is it? that this Adhesis methodology is all about, what it is that I have devoted my life to. Basically, we all know that there is change. I would not be saying anything new if I... Aha, uh -huh. okay. Here is the first learning. This happened to me many times. In CIS countries, all countries that have been under the Soviet legacy. Look what happened here. What happened here? Just right now happened. I'm asking you what's happening. It is wrong, right? You see, I've done it in Ukraine, happened to me in Moscow. By mistake, this is wrong. But just a second, I want people to see that first. <laughs> This is wrong. And I have presidents of companies in the audience for one hour watching something wrong and nobody says a word. This is what I said yesterday about silence. It's wrong. Nobody says a word. In the United States, I can tell you what will happen. Somebody will raise his hand and says, Professor Adizas, uh, your chart is wrong. In Israel, I will have 100 people shouting, you idiot, it is wrong. <laughs> In CIS countries, Tishina. <laughs> Nobody says a word. That is the problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's the beginning of the problem. Why? Because as I said yesterday in my presentation, people are bright, people are intelligent, especially in CIS countries, highly educated, but they don't dare to speak. So you have brains that are not being used, brains that are being hibernating, and the company is as good as the brains of the people in the company. But if these brains are not being used, it's like having an engine with 100, uh, whatever it's called, and there only one piston is working. How good can that car be? So please, don't let anything wrong go by the wayside. Speak up. And do what? Solve the problem. Why solve the problem? Because whenever there is change, there is going to be a problem. By definition. Why there is going to be a problem by definition? Because what does it mean change? What does the word change mean? Change means that there is something new happening like this was new. And that is a problem. Why is that something new a problem? It's like coming to an intersection. You're going on a road, you come to an intersection. That's change, something new, an intersection. Now what should I do? I have to decide what to do. I have to decide. Should I go left? Should I go right? Should I go back? What should I do? 
Some people have difficulty deciding. I don't have enough information. Because whenever there is change, something new, you have decision under uncertainty. Why uncertainty? Because we don't have all the information. I don't know enough about left. I don't know enough about right. I don't know. You only know after the fact. So making decision making in time of change is making decisions under uncertainty. And some people have difficulty dealing with uncertainty. So they said, I'm not going to go left, I'm not going to go right, I'm not going to go back, I'm not going to decide. Wrong, you just decided. What did you decide? To stay in your place. And maybe it is the worst decision of them all. So, ladies and gentlemen, whenever there is change, you are constantly deciding, even when you are not deciding. You are constantly deciding. So first of all, be conscious and aware. You are deciding. That's called you are making choices. You cannot escape making choices in time of change. There is no way out. You cannot avoid it. So you better be conscious that you are making change, choices. So you have to do something about it. But deciding is not good enough. Many of us decide and do nothing about it. So if you do nothing about the decision that you decided, it's like not deciding, it's nothing happened. You also need to implement your decision. You have to execute your decision. Now I would like you to tell you something. I don't know. What is the dean? What is the dean? Where are you, Ramon? Oh, you already left? Okay, anyway. We have some faculty here. Do we have any faculty from the business school here? Raise your hand. Only one, two, three, four. Guys, I don't know about Nazarbayev University. I don't know about your business school. But I've done, I've lectured in over 50 business schools. There is a common denominator. None of them teach how to implement decisions. There is no one course on implementation, usually. All the courses on how to make good decisions in finance, in marketing, in human resources, in supply chain, you name it, game theory, statistics, economics, it's all how to make good decisions. Not one course on implementation. What the danger? MBA or people graduate from business schools have a lot of ideas, they don't know how to implement them. They become a pain in the neck in the company. They become troublesome. Oh, why don't we do this? Oh, why don't we do that? Why don't we do this? They don't have the slightest idea of the complications of implementation. They're Don Quixotes. You have to learn how to implement. And ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, implementation is a hell of a lot more difficult making decisions. Decisions is easy to make. Try to implement them. How many of you decided to be a nicer person? Try to implement it. <laughs> or to lose weight. Or whatever decision. Implementation is where the problem is. That's why I also don't like a lot of the consulting firms. They tell you what to do, walk away, and now you have to implement it. Ah, that's what the problem is, how to implement it. Why is implementation so complicated? Because there is risk. It might not work. And I don't know how to control risk. Uh. So why do we have problems when there is change? Because we are making decisions under uncertainty, and if we implement it, we are working with risk. That's why we say, oh my God, we have a problem. That's why it's a problem. So what should we do? Many people, because 
uncertainty and risk is painful, too painful, I don't know what to do. They say, the hell with it, I'm not going to do anything. So look at this. If all problems are caused by change, you will have no problems only when there is no more change. And what would that happen? When you are dead. When we are dead, we finally have no more problems. Nikos Kazantakis, the author of Zorba the Greek, on his tomb in Crete, I saw a beautiful sentence. It says, no more hope, no more fear, finally free. <laughs> you are finally free when you are dead. Being alive, which is change, change is life, means having problems. So all you young people, welcome to the real club called life. It's one long string of problems. We all dream about not having problems. Oh my God, when am I going to stop having problems? When is it going to be over? And the answer is, never. So better get used to it. And I have bad news for you young people. I have very bad news for you. Change is accelerating, going faster and faster and faster and faster. And not only that it's accelerating, it's also, again, you did not do anything, you see? Nobody shouted that this is wrong. Guys, I want you to shout when something is wrong. Change is accelerating. A new iPhone, a new thing, a new technology, everything is moving faster. This Astana, I've been here four years ago. <laughs> it was nothing. Look what's happening, my God. And it's not also that it's going faster, it's also getting overlapping. What do I mean by overlapping? A change in one subsystem impacts other subsystems almost instantly. So everything is getting more complicated. Example, look at the internet, which is just a technological innovation. It had tremendous impact on business. In the United States, bookstores are closing left and right. Nobody goes to a bookstore anymore. They buy through Amazon. But not only bookstores, retail stores are closing up. People buying Amazon. Not only retail is changing because of internet, it has political repercussions. They say that the Arab Spring was caused by, not caused, was facilitated by Facebook and Twitter. People communicated, let's go and demonstrate. It's happening the same thing right now in Hong Kong. It had political repercussions. It has social repercussions. In the United States, I don't know about Kazakhstan, a lot of the dating and the marriages are being done through the internet. All the dating, all the matching is done through, matching is done through the internet. It had a tremendous social, political, legal, business repercussions. Look what's happening. Technological innovation blah, 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 impacts everything else. So it's going faster and more complicated. What does it mean? More problems, more complicated problems. So if our grandparents had a major problem two, three times in their lifetime, our parents had 10 problems in lifetime, you're going to have hundreds of problems in your lifetime. I actually feel sorry for my children. I look at them, I said, oh my God, we had it easy. You're not going to have it easier. Bad news for you. This is called stress. Lots of problems coming faster and much more complicated. Much more stressful. It's not strange that the more developed country is, the higher is the rate of depression. 
People are getting depressed left and right in developing, developed countries. When I go to an underdeveloped country, people are poor, smiling and laughing and playing music. <laughs> you go to a developed country, Beverly Hills, three cars in the garage, two houses, daily going to psychiatrists. Doctor, what should I do? I'm going crazy. The more developed the country is, standard of living is going up, quality of life is going down. I hear more laughter in an underdeveloped country in one day than I hear in a whole year in a developed country. They're not laughing anymore. Stress. In Russia, I see a big difference between the rest of Russia and Moscow. Big difference. What to do? What to do? How to manage the future? And I'm not talking about business. I'm talking life. What is in front of you is not going to be funny. It's not going to be easy.